Next step is going to be to install this main gear. And once I do that, I'll show you why it is that people shave this off. And uh, it makes it a whole lot easier to get it in, get everything installed. All right, but for now, let's go ahead and put this in. Remember that your cluster gear's got to still be in the bottom of the case. Okay, it can't be up. And if you're anything like this one, this is a very snug case. Anytime you're having to use force on something, though, to get it to go in, always make sure that you're not hitting on something. Okay, this one just happens to be very snug on the case. There we go. Gears are now aligned inside. All right. Now, if you look right here, that oil collector is now rubbing on those gears. And what you've got to do is get it worked down and around that because that's going to ride in between the chevrons and this gear. So you got to get that pushed in and around. Usually you can just kind of pry it around with a screwdriver and it will pop into place. But that's why a lot of people shave that off. And so they don't have to wrestle with that and get it to go in. Okay. With a little friendly persuasion, I managed to convince it to go on down inside there. All right. And interference wise, it will not hit. Everything looks good. With the main gear in place now, now it's time to bring the cluster gear up in place and set it. All right. For me, the easy way to do this is to stand it up on its edge, with the main gear hanging over, and I now take the counter shaft and begin to push it through. Now, don't go trying to drive this out. I've seen people break the front of the case off by trying to drive the counter shaft in when things weren't aligned up front. So make sure that your bores are lined up front, all your washers are lined up. If the shaft doesn't slide easily, it's not properly aligned. Okay, everything should be easy. Okay. With that properly aligned, everything shifted. All right, this is where we need to put this T-bar in. All right, the one for the reverse gear isn't straight like it should be, so we're going to tap it around a little bit. Remember, you need to do all this before all this gets tight. Okay, we got a nice fit on those. We do not want to drive these in right now. Okay, we wanted to align them to make sure they were properly aligned, and we can leave this bar in place while we tap them most of the way in. All right, hear that clink, clink? The counter shaft is not properly aligned. It's hitting in the hole. All right, so we're going to take a look and see what we're hitting, see what we can see. Okay, the cluster gear dropped down a hair, that's all, looks good. Okay, this is very close to being its final position, but we don't want to drive it there the rest of the way. The reason that we don't want to drive these two counter shafts all the way in and lock that plate in is because here at the back, 
is going to be where the main shaft fits through and the bearing retainer will go into this hole. That plate fits over top of the bearing retainer. All right, so we don't want to drive that in until we're there ready yet. Okay, so next thing you want to do, shift the main gear as far forward as it will go. Okay, once it's there, take your last blocking ring, lube it up. Do not forget the lube. If you forget to lube it, you will be hard pressed to get this transmission to do what it's supposed to do manually sitting on a bench. It won't do it. All right, with the blocking ring, lubed up, put it onto the front of the main gear, like that. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Remember the main gear is as far forward as it will go. Take your main shaft and slide the blocking, uh, sorry, the clutch sleeve as far forward as you can get it without releasing the synchronizer springs. There we go. Just about like that. That's what it's going to look like inside. If you go any further than that, those springs are going to shoot out, and then you're going to be backtracking and having to go through some tough work. So you want it to be just about like that. Now that we have the cluster gear installed, we have the main gear sitting as far forward as it will go, we now need to install the pilot bearings down inside the main gear. They're going to go right down in here. All right. I have found that the easiest way to do this is to use a counter shaft or something their equivalent of the counter shaft. In my case, it's going to be this wooden dowel. It's the same size. We are going to take and coat that shaft with grease. And stick it down into the main gear. With that done, we are going to take our pilot bearings, which are much larger than the roller bearings for the cluster gear, and start putting them in. And if you try to put some on each side in four different configurations, it will kind of help hold the shaft straight and help keep things upright as you insert these bearings. Now I have really big fingers, so I find it difficult to get down in here. I have not been known in the past, on days when my arthritis was kicking in, to uh, use needle nose pliers for this or hemostats but today I seem to be doing just fine and the bearings are going in just fine alright once you've got the bearings installed I got one more to go there we go sometimes they'll, they'll send extras in the kit this particular one did not. Okay, and usually what's going to happen is you get to go to get that last one. At least with my big fingers, I do. I have to take a screwdriver or something to push it in when I get to the last one. Because it's always a little bit tight, which it should be. If it's loose. You probably got something wrong somewhere. All right. There we go. This is what it's going to look like when the needle bearings are installed in your pilot bearing. Okay. Now, if you just reach in there and grab hold 
of that shaft and pull it out, all of your bearings are going to come out with it. What you have to do is slowly work and rotate that shaft out until your pilot bearings stay in and it looks just like that. Now we have the cluster gear installed, the main gear installed with its pilot bearings in it, we have the blocking ring mounted on the main gear. Without that blocking ring, you're going to have a really hard time ever shifting into third gear. So don't forget to put your blocking ring on. All right. At this point, we check our snap rings. We have a snap ring on the front bearing. We have a snap ring on the main gear holding the bearing in place. And we have a snap ring on the front of the main gear. If you do not have all three of these snap rings, you are going to experience problems when you put this into operation. So make sure that you have all three of these snap rings installed. Here we go. We're going to now install the gear. Main shaft. Bring it in from the back. Lift it up and over. There you go. It will the <sighs> clutch sleeve will slip over the cluster gear. Once it drops down, you're in a much better position now to start getting everything lined up. There we go. Everything lines up. And let's make sure. <clears throat> All right. This is what you're going to want to look for. All right, we got everything to slide in and seem pretty good. But if you'll notice right here, your blocking ring is not aligned to your synchronizer hub. So you've got to get those two aligned. Okay, just rotate it around until it does align and slide it all back together. All right, now everything should fit in properly. Okay. Snug fit all around. Temptation at this point is going to want to be to start playing with spinning through all the gears. Okay, we're not ready to do that at this point. If you start spinning the gears, what's going to happen is this whole main shaft is going to fall out of the back of the transmission. All right, so you're not ready yet to be able to do anything like that. Right now, we just want to make sure everything is in and where it belongs. Okay. First reverse slide gear is sliding. It's going into the gears. They're fine. Do they line up properly with each other? Okay. They're in alignment when you look at them. Same with the lower. First reverse, they're lined up. That's what it needs to be. You need to make sure everything's lined up. All right. Now, as we go trying to push this back, everything starts to fight against us. All right. We don't want things fighting against us. So, what we're going to do now is it's time to install the oil collector.